All right. This is Inside with Outsiders. My name is Jeremy S. Gary, and today we have Ileana Papayoriu. You. You. Huh. <laughs> Ileana Papayoriu. I've been practicing for like five minutes trying to say your last name correctly. Like five seconds, not minutes. You do a great job. Okay. Papayoriu. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ileana Papayoriu. Yes. All right. Now I'm, I'm ready to go to Greece and host a TV show there. <laughs> All right. Let, uh, let me get one, one more time. One more time. Sorry. Papa, you're you. Ah, perfect. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> the rest of this is cake. Now nah, I'm good. <laughs> so, Ileana, you, if, for those who don't know her, and I'm sure, as you said earlier, nobody no one knows, knows me you. here. So. But uh, you were actually one of the first, what we call an OG outsider. So, like the second year we were operating, you were, you, you partook in a bike ride of ours. Yes. And um, I came for the pizza, you know, and the beer. So. She came for the pizza and beer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't tell her about bike riding, but she ended up uh, yeah. en enjoying Six it. Six hours, I don't know. How no. many hours did we do? I think it we was were biking, biking like the whole like city. Three, three, two, three hours. Two hours. It was two yeah, hours. We had to go horrible. and then to come back. Like We oh, had yeah, to come, really back come back with the bicycles. Yeah, right. yeah. It seemed longer because we had pizza and beer after, uh, yeah. before. Yeah. That's horrible. You, you, you're what, tricking people in with food and beer? To go yeah. on bike rides? Yes. This, that's horrible. <laughs> the same thing I do for the interview series. <laughs> 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 yeah, you get, you know, you get candy. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, so you partook and you were actually helpful. I know you, you don't really realize, but you people sharing our, our mission statement and photos and stuff kind of help us spread the word because we were really young at the time. And thank you for that. I was young. Like, I, were you? No, I'm talking about the, the outsiders. You're still young. Okay. Outsiders are young. Okay. She's, she's Just straight, young. like, yeah, putting absolutely. the facts straight here. Yeah, we got yeah. you. You are young. I'm happy I helped you, and I love you, and you know that. I appreciate yeah. it. I love you right back. Thank you. And I, I do, I really appreciate everything, and the, the fact that you're still a, a fan of the outsiders, and, and being part of this show, for, for that matter. Oh, thank you. You um, know, nobody knows me, so. Well, why doesn't anyone know you? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Greece. What part of Greece are you from? Uh, from a small town, Patras. Mm -hmm. I live in Athens now. Okay. I work on television in Greece. I'm a TV like presenter. What uh, what TV shows? Uh, I and, do a fashion and, show, and like if, fashion show now about fashion. And so you do fashion, but when I met you, you were living in New York. I was living in New York. I was a model. Yeah. Yeah. I was living here for seven years. I remember when when you moved here and uh, oh sorry when you were here not when you moved here and. What was interesting is, uh, and we spoke about this the other day, Yeah. I kind of felt like you were floating around, like you weren't sure what you wanted to do. And you, I remember, you, I think we had a couple conversations. And, and, uh, about that, yeah. About that. And then you moved back to Greece. I know we're jumping ahead because we want to hear your story. But you moved back to Greece and everything hit. Like everything, even your, your health improved. You know, everything, your yeah. career went through the roof. Like it's insane. I remember watching and, and obviously these days we judge you know, success when it, when it comes to entertainment through social media numbers, right? So I remember, uh, you know, we're friends on Instagram. And I was like, wait, what, what's going on here? What happened? Yeah, yeah. what happened? <laughs> you had like, you know, 20 something, 20,000 followers. 20,000 followers, that, yeah, that's what I had. Yeah, yeah, you did. And then all of a sudden, I look one day and it's like 500,000. I was like, what? What? <laughs> what happened in Greece? Happened? I mean, yeah. you just left. Yeah. You know, you remember like we had like these talks and everything. I was here, I was modeling like for 10 years already. Yeah. Like starting like from Athens and went like to Germany, Berlin, Hamburg, yeah. Hamburg, and then Milan and Paris. Ended up like here, which I loved it. Like I had a great time here, like a very good agency. I, I'm still with them. But like after so many years, we just want to know as a model, like your work is going to like stop like soon soon you're right. not going to be a model like forever you can do it now if you want because now we have diversity but like even like five years ago we didn't right we have like zero sizes and everything which still like they still have that like i think it's a whole like it's still a, a bit of a scam that what's the scam you don't have like so much the diversity in fashion of course it's only not. no no like you see the commercials and everything and like the Insta instagram post stuff about inclusivity and everything, but yeah. like in fashion, fashion, the size is still zero. Right, they don't care. They're, they do, don't they're care. only doing it for PR. We know this. It's not only PR, it's about like, even like for designers, it's easier to have like a smaller size because it's less fabric, less money. Ah. Everything like is less for them, like yeah. in, exp in the expenses. So that works for them like better. Yeah. So that cannot change so easy. Mm -hmm to make like um, the samples and everything. It's right. easy to throw like 10 like really small dresses for them. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So it was re really, you know, stressful. 
that you have like to work out, like eat healthy. And I was doing it for 10 years. You remember me? I was yeah. waking up like 6 a.m., yeah. working out like three hours a day, yeah. having like only protein and salad, which I hate now. Like, I don't even like want to see veggies like y- was outside. It, was like, it, you think you attribute that to all those years of having to stick to this diet? I think because I had to. Yeah. Like I had like the, I had the body, the skeleton because of my parents. That's why I became a model. You right. know, it was like it, my body was okay. But then you have to maintain like right. the size if you want to do the job. Like nobody forced me. Like nobody right. ever told me of that course. like you got. No, it happens, but like never to me. Like never, nobody tell me like you gain weight or you lost or anything. They were fine. So I was, was just self implemented. Yeah, like you have to maintain. You have to keep this job. You have to keep like making your money. Yeah. So you just work out, eat healthy, sleep early, drink lots of water and everything so you look young and friends like of course. for as long as you can. Right. And then I was like, what am I going what am I going to do next? Like I studied like in Greece like business management and journalism and I wasn't sure if I want to do like any of these. You remember I was starting like a shoe like company? Yeah, I remember that. But that like fall out. Let's leave this story outside. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> Because it's not good for the other people, not for me. Yeah. So let's just forget about no that. So um, I had like I started like have anxiety and stuff, mm-hmm. and I was like feeling sick. Yeah. I was starting like taking like medicines for thing things like I. I, I remember we went to yeah. eat and there were there was you yeah, having stomach digestive like issues yes, and so on. Yeah. I had allergies like, yeah. and it was like all because of stress. Mm-hmm. So one day I decided that I need a break yeah. and I should go to Greece. Right. And I decided like in five minutes, I just booked the ticket. Right. I took my stuff and I left. Yeah. So I went to Greece. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to get like a therapy there and get like better. Mm-hmm. With like Greek people don't know that actually I never said that with people like in Greece. They don't know that I was sick. So right. I was sick. <laughs> right. I mean, it's understandable. Like, yeah, especially like we're human and we can like get like through many stuff. Yeah. Especially in New York and, and the thought of like your future not being secure, right? Your future yeah. wasn't secured. So My future wasn't secure. Yeah. So it was like really like I had a, a really hard time. Yeah. I have a few good friends like you and John, like we were like with me, like yeah. by me all the time. But I really needed like a break. So mm-hmm. I left. So I went to Greece to do like a therapy and like get some rest and be with my family, you know, to have like the comfort of your home. So I went there and a week after um, I got like an offer for a job, like the next top model, the Greek one. Greek next top model. Yep. Greece is next top model. And I was like, I would love to do that. Like right. I was I was actually. Were you, were you offered the job or you offered to, to the audition. cast it? Audition, yeah, yeah, the audition, yeah. Okay. They were like, let's do an audition like, and stuff like that. And I loved the show. Like, I was watching that show here. Really? Yeah. And were you ever, have you ever done any TV work or acting no, work? No, ever? no, no. Okay. Just a commercial, like for, um, uh, for Razors. You know, But did you ever speak? Got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that you did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, <laughs> yeah. That was you? She yeah. got it? Did you, did you have any speaking roles, though? No, no, no. So this was, was your first audition for a I speaking role? I was just doing role. that. It's <laughs> on your arm? You know. No, my leg. <laughs> well, I know the Greeks are hairy, but I mean. <laughs> 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 I used to, but like, you know, technology. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll skip that out for you. <laughs> we'll leave it on the Greek version of this show. They'll understand. <laughs> yeah, they will understand for sure. So like... um. I went there like to do the audition and stuff and I was like so excited. Yeah. Like I was like doing the audition I, as it was happening like for real as they were like recording and everything and I was like got in the role and everything. It was like about the thing that I was doing like modeling. So it was easy for me to talk about it like right. to the girls that were coming and how to help them what they can avoid, you know, and all the all this stuff. So I got the job. Well, cheers to that. Hey. Yeah, which was surprising. <laughs> This is water, by the way. It's not beer. Yeah, that's it water. It looks like water, but it's beer. Cheers, Cheers. to that. Cheers to the liquid death. Appreciate you guys. Uh, sparkling And water. it's sparkling, yeah. Nice. So you got to get your first audition for anything, I guess, speaking related, and you got it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, uh, that's not usual. Yeah, but you know me. I talk a lot. 
Like, you do? I cannot shut up. If like. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, never know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God this is a podcast because you're supposed to talk a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, no, but you always have something good to say. You're obviously very funny, entertaining. Even if you're not trying to be funny, you can be funny. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny now, but no. I know that. Like, <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So you got the job and and um, I got the job, yeah. And how I mean, your life changed. I don't know how you say overnight, but I mean. Yes, in the beginning, I thought that like I'm gonna stay there for three months, like from the project, and mm. like. And then move back to New York. Yes, yeah. and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna be healthy again. I'm gonna get some money. I'm gonna be better. I'm gonna go back to my work, like you know, with like confidence, mm -hmm. and everything is gonna be fine. So the project it went like for six months instead of like of three because it was doing really well. So mm. I would like send like the the episodes and stuff from the beginning. Like they knew that's gonna be like better. So we made like more episodes, and then I got anxiety there too what? because like when this show like aired, yeah, it was like a huge like hit. Like everybody loved it. How long after it. it aired? How long after you shot it did it air? Uh, we sh we started shooting like in April or May. No, it was May, mm -hmm. and it was like September, like on TV. Okay. So like between like this time, everything was like was perfect and everything. I was working all day. Like we had like shootings like from one day to another without like a stop because it's a TV show. So you have yeah. like actually to finish it because the budget, you know. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was fine. I had time. I, I, I found so, time. So you you. Um, what caused your anxiety during that time? Well, when it, the show aired, like, as you said, like, in one night from 20K followers, mm -hmm. I went, like, they went, like, 100,000, like, 200,000, like, everybody, like, got interested. And I I never thought that it's going to be, like, such a big thing. I thought it's going to be, like, a job, like, modeling, when you go right. do a photo shoot and you are the model. So nobody actually cares about you. They just see the clothes and the stuff. And this show is about, like, the new models, the new girls. Right. So I was focusing, like, on the girls, like, filming, like, the show. I never thought that it might be about me. Well, of course. Well, I know you may not have thought that, but it's also yeah. not just you, but it's also you sharing your thoughts and your ideas. And obviously, you seem to be interesting yeah. enough to now... People and wanted to tune in. And I was, like, really naive because I was, like, so honest. And I still am, so... I was I put myself like all out, which is probably what made you so, which gained you popularity, right? Because you're being authentic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, you're not sugarcoating it for TV and hiding yourself. No, I was like, I was real. <laughs> yeah. So what, I, am, like, I keep it real because what I love doing, that. What were some of the things that you said that you look back like, oh, wow, I was really honest and tr being everything. <laughs> everything you said. Everything you have to watch the show. <laughs> I mean, I don't speak Greek. I mean, I need to I'm gonna translate for you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you do you look back on anything you said and like uh maybe maybe I should not have no. said that? Okay. No, because you know after I can it's for me, sorry, because I'm thinking in Greek and I have to translate everything now. Um it's very nice and it's like really it's a relief that people like you for who you are. Mm. So I never had to be like someone else. I am right. just myself, you know, I'm honest. I do so many mistakes and I'm going to do a lot more for sure because I'm human and I love to make mistakes because I'm going to learn like more things like in my life. Mm -hmm. But they like me for who I am, you know, yeah. or they hate me because I am like that, you know, but right. they, I'm honest and they're honest with me. Right. And I love that connection. And, and did you, were you ever afraid to like mess up on TV or anything? No, I was messing. You were messing up? Yes. You know, cause I always tell people <laughs> like when... You know, you think about it. When you see somebody mess up on TV, most of the time, like really mess up, embarrass themselves if they're not TV personalities. My first thought when I when I see someone mess up is, oh, I want to help them. Like I feel bad for them. I wish they weren't feeling so embarrassed right now. They shouldn't, yeah. you know. And if I think, I think about like if I were speaking in front of people, and I were to mess up. I'm sure other people would feel the same yeah. way. And I'd have some friends like Bams that would point and laugh. But, you know. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm that person. Like I, I don't feel embarrassed when I mess up. I right. just laugh, you know, because right. like. It happens. Which like from the <coughs> small things. Sometimes I forget that the camera is running and I'm just taking off my shoes and just sitting there. And everybody was like, Illy, we're like on camera. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. 
That's but isn't mm-hmm. honesty better? Because, I mean, if you were one of the girls that were actually on the show, wouldn't you want the person that you're going in front to be on, actually honest with you? Yeah, about I was trying yeah. to do that. And yeah. most of the time I was doing that on, ca- on camera, of course. And then off camera, I was trying like to explain them like better because sometimes they don't, a- they don't actually understand or believe that you're honest with them. Oh, like, your producers? No, no, no. Like the girls. Like they think, oh, sh- oh yeah. you make you say it's so hard because you don't want us like succeed or everything. And I was like, no, no, it's really hard. Like, yeah. you have like to wake up early. You have like to be focused. You have like to take to make money. You're gonna be by yourself, like you know, if traveling. So you have to be really careful, and you have like to care about yourself first. You have to take care of yourself. And what's that entail for us? For if you're giving somebody that advice, what are you referring to when you say take care of yourself? You know, I did that like I, I became a model like by, by an accident. But let's hear that story. How did that yeah. happen? <laughs> so I was a secretary. I was studying like journalism in. How, uh, how old were you? 34. No, how old were you? Oh, I was 22. But you, you were a model at 22. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of late for, for modeling, Yeah, right? because I wasn't supposed to be a model. I was supposed to be a journalist and I was like studying. That was my, my I studied journalism too. Journalism yeah. You are, yeah. So, and so here we are now. Here we are, yeah. <laughs> randomly. <laughs> My path was club promotion and running an outdoor uh, social club, and your path was modeling. You see? Yeah. So, like, I was a secretary to my to the college I was studying yeah. because I had like the money to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So I was working there, and I was taking like the the Greek subway, uh, and in the stop that I st- where, where I was stopping like to go to work, there was this guy from the from the, the main like the USPS, yeah. the Greek USPS. So he gave me like a card of my manager, the one that I have now and I always like had. And he was like, you should call her. Wait, the, po- the, the, the mailman. The mailman, yeah. The mailman gave the you mailman. A, cr- a, ma- a, manager, a model manager's card. Yes. That did dude has a great side hustle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but how did he... I, well, why did the agency he was close like to my, to my work. So, so he, knew, he knew her. Oh, so he became friends with her. Yeah, everybody's friends with her. So if you met her, you're going to love her. But when do I meet her? When you come to Greece. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming to Greece. Uh, well, that's interesting. That's like very yeah. different from most. Cause, I mean, the stories I've heard from people that have uh, been modeling is walking down the street or even in high school. Oh, that happened to me li- last week. To you? Yeah, yeah, in Soho. Someone like, scouted me like in Soho, like a yeah. girl. She was so pretty. And I was like, oh, thank you, darling. You, I'm so old now. Yeah. <laughs> I used to, <laughs> but thank you. I'm old now. <laughs> old now. At 34. <laughs> Such a model mentality. Well, I'm old to be like to start my modeling career. Well, of course. So what did she say? She said, I told her like, I used to be a model, but I'm old now. And she was like, no, we can work like on 20s. And I'm like, I'm not on my 20s. <laughs> oh my <laughs> thank God. you, though. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's, let's talk about, so th- this guy gives the, you the card. He gave me the card. And I say like, I took the card. I didn't want to be rude. You know, he was right. very nice with me. And I said, oh, thank you so much. And I just left. And I never called. So the next day I saw him again and he gave me another card. And that was going like for a month. <laughs> He gave you a card every, every day. Every day month. in the really? same like train station. And I was like, okay, let's take the card. Why didn't you call in the first place? I never called. But I didn't, why? I didn't why? call. I didn't want to be a model. I didn't want to. Oh, so you didn't want to be it. Did you know you could though? No, I didn't know I could too. Like I I never it never crossed my mind. Did you ever look in the mirror? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Yeah, but you know, you know me, like I, yes. Like yeah. I used to I never like go out. I'm not like so social. I like I like a few people. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not. I didn't know that that's like my field. So, one, how did you eventually you eventually called her? No, my boyfriend at the time like make him called her, yeah. and he was selling cars, and I was like helping helping like him with um the how you say that in English way with the loans yeah. that you take from the bank. Mm-hmm. Because I could do like money stuff for uh, for my job as a secretary, so I yeah. knew how to do that thing. And he was like, "Oh, there's this lady. She wants to buy a car and stuff. Like, can you like go there, like, and meet her and stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. I'm gonna help you." And it was like that girl. Get out of here. <laughs> in that office. And did, I, yeah. Did, was she was she actually buying a car, or was she did she find no, out? No, she never bought a car. She no. found out where your boyfriend worked and went there. Uh, no, he called. He called her. He oh, he called because her. I was taking the cars at home. So like he called her day. for you. Yes. Oh, so he tricked you like he Jeremy tricked you to go on a bike. Yeah. Trip. <laughs> ah, <laughs> the like. same way exactly. I always fall for the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went there. There is. I remember like the agency. 
from like 12 mm. years ago. There mm. was like this huge table and the door opens like and she was waiting like for me and she like stood mm. up and like she was like, she's mine. Nobody moves. And I was like, OK, that's an interesting lady. OK, <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's not going to go well. <laughs> so I was like a bit scared of her and I just wanted like this to finish like as soon as as, as possible, yeah. you know. So I was like, oh, so here are the papers. Let's talk about that. And she was like, oh, no, girl, like we're not talking about that. And I don't want a car. Thank you. Uh, you're going to be a model like I'm going to manage you and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, thank you. Uh, no, I was like, wrong address. I didn't know what to do. I was so embarrassed. Like, I was like, how the f can I go out? <laughs> like, uh, how sh can I say that? Like, no. So how did, leave. You, did you did you not leave out of fear? No, because like, she was like so strong and confident, and yeah. like, and she's like so beautiful. So she she captured like my attention. I was mm. like, who's that bitch? You know, yeah. like she's so <laughs> strong. I'm, I have to learn something from her. Yeah. So for 30 minutes, like, she was, like, talking me, like, into it. And then she was, like, you, you're you going to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to do that. Like, this is going to happen. So you just have, like, to go for it. So right. don't, like, waste my time. I was, like, inside my head, like, this lady is so <laughs> crazy. And she was, like, no contract, like, one month. You're going to try. If you like it, like, you're going to stay, like, at the job. If you don't, like, it's fine. Oh, wow. But at, at least you're going to have tried, you know. Yeah. And you're going to know if you like it or not. So I was, like, okay, let's try. I, I never said like a word to my parents because I had to leave my job to go to the castings because I was working all day. You left your job as in you quit your job? Yeah, yeah, I quit my job. The first month, the first trial month, you quit your job. Yeah, I had so to, to do the castings. Yeah. Well, if I do something, I am committed. Like I have to put it all or I'm not doing it. Right. Yeah. So I went to my first casting. Uh, I got the job. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then like... Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> It was shocking for me. Um, I, well, couldn't, I, I couldn't I believe that I got a job. Yeah, right, I was right, like, right. wow, maybe I can do that, you know? Yeah. I was like very excited. And then I got every job like from the first castings. And I she booked for me like my first job like in Germany. So this is the first month you got every... Yes, I did like okay. six covers the first month. Oh, six covers the first month. Yeah. And covers are, are not yeah. easy to get. No, no, they're not easy, but yeah. like... I think, like, she got a vibe from me that, like, I'm a nice person and she liked me from the first second. So yeah. she really, really, really worked on me. Okay. And, like, everybody was so nice with me at, at the job, like, which, like, it doesn't happen all the time. They don't actually pay attention, like, to the models. But everybody was there, like, waiting for me, like, with a coffee and, like, breakfast yeah. and everything. And I thought this is, like, the reality in the beginning. And then I understood that it's like only for me because I had friends like after, like model friends. And I remember I, have a I had a student for a magazine, like the cover, and another friend of mine, she had like the, t the editorial like inside. Mm -hmm. And she goes like, do you like believe it? Like the fucking people, we don't have lunch. And I was like, what do you mean? Like we had lunch and breakfast and everything. And she was like, yeah, because it's you. And really? they love you. They love your manager. And I was like, ah. I was like, oh my God, that's why everybody's nice to me. <laughs> I didn't get it. Yes. Even in the casting. So who is your manager? How come your manager is so well regarded? Well, her name is Elena Khstopoulou. Okay. Um, I can't say that. You can try. Elena. Elena. Christopoulou. Christopoulou. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's like really good looking. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> she's she's the best in Greece. Yeah. She she's the best you can you can have actually because she cares, and mm -hmm. because she cares like for you like she cares for me for the pho photographer for the stylist for everybody like she makes like the best the best deal for everyone mm -hmm. and she tries like to work everything out so people love her and have her back because they work with her like for more than twenty years now. And they know that she's professional and, and that she actually cares. That's why I love her. I trust her, trust her like 100%. And she's still your manager, <coughs> right? She's still, still your manager. manager. Yeah, yeah. Like forever. She's my, she's, yeah. she's my family now. It's not like a work thing. Yeah. Right. Because even when I was like abo uh, away in New York and everything, where, where she couldn't make money with me, like my mother is like, it's, it's in New York. It's New yeah. York models. Yeah. She was like talking to me, like texting me and like calling me like every single day. She never like pulled back. Right. Like she was there for me every day. 
And she's the one that got you the the, uh, the audition, audition for yes. the show. Okay. Yes, yes. But you also mentioned you she got your first gig in Germany, right? So that's when the first time you yes. left. Yes, it was for Greece. a huge like hair company. Mm -hmm. I left. I went to Germany like for two days for the job, mm -hmm. and then between like those two days, I booked like a bunch of jobs like for the whole month, and eventually I never went back to Greece. I just stayed there for a month and then the one month was like two months three months five months where six in months. germany uh hamburg in the beginning and then berlin okay yes and you know what the funny thing is i didn't know that i can't i could leave i thought because i was booking the job that i couldn't say oh no i can i don't want to accept this job i want to oh, leave you had to take everyone i thought that i had to take the job when did you realize you didn't six months later <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't know that I was getting paid because the first month you don't get paid. Like it's a trial and you take the pictures and stuff. First so month in Greece or first in month? Greece, okay, in Greece. Yeah. And like I was there like for s the first month. I was like, you know, guys, like I came here like with 100 euro and like I'm, I, I eat only, only lettuce and stuff because I didn't have money and I have to maintain my money for the whole month. So I was like starving. I was like 30 kilos. <laughs> And I was like, guys, I need to ask like some money and I feel so embarrassed. And they were like, what do you mean? Like you have so much money in your account. And I was like, from where? They were like, from you work every day. You have money in your account. I didn't know that I, have, I had like oh money. Oh my God. This yeah. you do. Oh. Nothing. Not, I was just mm. a girl from a village, you know? Yeah. No, it's, I mean, it's, I didn't even it's understand. so endearing. It's so it's sweet. But no, that was stupid <laughs> because the first like, <laughs> no, the first two weeks I didn't realize they had like a subway. I was walking and it's a long distance in Hamburg. Trust me, I was stupid. <laughs> Let's make that clear. She said it. No, I'm not um, embarrassed, you know. I didn't know anything. I just went there right. for two days. So no. wait, wait. So does the, man, the money was going directly through your manager into your account and, no, yes. and she didn't tell you or you just didn't look? No, she knew, but she thought that I would be like smart enough to understand that I'm getting paid. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay? So you reached six months in Germany. Yes. And then you finally realized not only do you have money. Yes. Well, you realize that a month. I can in, leave. <laughs> but you can yes. leave. So where did you go? I, I went to Greece. I went to see my family. Okay. I was like, I thought that I was feeling like um, like I left like forever. Mm. Yeah, well, six months is a long time. It changed me. You know, it changed like everything. Before like my first like travel, I I was so cheerful. I'm cheerful again. But like years ago, I was like dancing every morning and hugging all my friends. Yeah. And I was like so smiling all day and everything. Yeah. And I was singing yeah. all the time. And when I came back like from Germany from this first trip that I didn't know anything and I was scared and I had like a map. Um, I was so different. Like my mom, like the first second I went like home, she was like, "Oh gosh, like you grew up." Oh wow! And I was like, "Do you, what do you mean?" And she was like, "No, you changed." She was like, "It's fine. Like you, eventually you're gonna grow up." What did she, she mean was, like, exactly? Really that you were no longer this cheery, happy. Like she opened the door and I didn't like hug my family after six months. I was like, you know, I was like. Maybe because I was scared like the six months and I tried to hide it that I'm scared. I was walking alone like in the streets. Yeah. I didn't know anything, no one. I was by myself. I was working all day. I was trying like to be focused and stuff. And then like this like character like stayed with me. Like I'm the, I was this character like in Germany, in Milan, in Paris, like in New York in the beginning. I was, I was like that before like I made you friends. Yeah. Because I had like to take care of myself and be careful and you know, have my eyes open and everything. Right. So this like person I was before like it disappeared but you say it's back now it's back now yeah yeah it's, it's definitely back now. yeah, yeah. Well, I do remember most interesting is I remember you being there's moments you were like that you know yeah but since you've been back this is the first time you've back in four years right to New York three years yeah three years and and you're definitely one obviously you're, you're healthier yes uh, I'm healthier and yeah. um and you just seem also like less stressed and happier. Yes, I am. And you said that you were like, you just don't, not to say you don't care, right? That's not the term, but you don't care with, you don't waste your time on things you don't need to care about. Yes, exactly. Is that a better way to say like it? Like since I do work on TV, so people like can see me 
mm-hmm. like in my good and my bad days and everything. But like I'm not modeling anymore, so I don't have to like to be a size zero or ha- or have like this kind of hair or like be like that or do like that, you know, or like right. with no makeup or anything. So I can be just how, whoever no, I want. So I don't care how I look. Is it the thought of having to be that way that's stressful? Whereas, because like, yeah, in my in that. my opinion, you look the same as you did before. But the fact that you don't have I to. I thought w- you would say I look better, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was rude. <laughs> that was very rude of you. I'm sorry. Cut. Re- ready? No, but I look, but I look young. You know, you, know, you look, look so much same. better than you used to look. Uh, <laughs> you look so thank gorgeous. You, <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's gonna be a great reel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. What I'm saying is, you, yes, you look great. Obviously, right? Yeah. But. I haven't changed anything. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Like, but is it the, uh, the I'm not stressing that not, about it anymore. It's because you're not forced to, or you, the thought of someone, because you never, no one ever told you, but you're self-implemented uh, restraints on yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And the fact that you don't have to do that anymore, and you still lo- you look even better now. Um, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, so the I guess the, the freedom you feel is what's yes. keeping you happy. It's about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I feel the same way about. I mean, the only way I could kind of compare it to is like, I enjoy going out. I enjoy going dancing. I worked in nightclubs for 15 years. I hated it after a while. You know, not that I would want to be in a nightclub all the time now, but the fact that I can go and enjoy myself and do it on my terms and the freedom I choose to do it. It's the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's It's kind of the same, but different, but it's the same thing. Yes. So I don't care anymore. Like how my hair you are like or how I look or anything. So nobody's going to like, well, they do judge like people now, you know, these days on social yeah. media and everything. But I don't care about that. Like, let it's me just not tell like you, it looks job. better. It looks now. better now. <laughs> 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 I got to reinforce that so uh, I don't get in trouble again. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. But I mean, okay. that's what age though, right? You start to realize that as you get older, like it doesn't really matter. No it more. doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, yeah. for real, I don't care anymore. And that's a great message to tell. I guess it's hard to tell these girls in 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 the shows, or these upcoming models, that not to care because they kind of have to care. They have to care for but work. Maybe like there's terms like on this job. Yeah. If you like, if you want to do this job, you have to follow the, te- the terms. Yeah. Like that, it is what it is. Like if you are a doctor, you have to study to be a doctor. Of course. You have to follow the terms. Yeah. You know, it's everything. All every job has its terms. Yeah. So I can say you you don't like don't care about it like don't stress about it and everything but eventually it's gonna happen to you because right. it's about like insecurity, you know. Like I mean, out of any job to have, model insecure. Like if you have any insecurities, that's like a job where it's gonna be focused on. Exactly, you yeah. get to castings and like uh, most of the times you don't get the job. Mm-hmm. Like you get rejected. So yeah, it's it's like that every day. So you have to be very strong if yeah. you want to do it. But you know, if you can like cut yourself a slack, you know, and like have fun with it, it would be amazing because I didn't have any of fun. Like I didn't. I when was did like that change for so you? It didn't like in modeling. I was like, I never had fun. Like I was from always... From the beginning? From the beginning. Really? I was just, I was always so focused and I wanted like to be like such a professional and do mm. like everything perfect that I missed the point. Mm. And I traveled like all around the world and I didn't experience anything because I was trying like to be like 6 a.m. workout. Then I have to go to the photo shooting. Then if I finish, I have to get to dinner and like eat like and go sleep early because I have to do that. You know, girls, go out, yeah. have fun, you know, but enjoy it's about your balance, life. Right. It's not about just but don't, find go, a balance. don't go rage. Don't go crazy. either. No, no, don't do that. Like, I don't, I'm not saying. That. No, but yeah. the thing is, there's a book. Uh. Uh, called Atomic Habits, right? And it talks about how to create uh, a habit and, and, and to last. And it's not about, let's say you want to, let's say you want to lose weight, for example. Someone is overweight, they want to lose weight. You don't starve yourself to get there. You start doing a little bit. So every step is manageable. It's, you can tolerate that. So basically creating long-term uh, habits, it starts with maintaining some sort of balance and happiness with each little change you make and it has to be gradual changes and that's how you're going to maintain it because if you go like hard on yourself and you try like to rush things yeah. it's going to like be- get back to you exactly like you're never like going to have like the result you want like about everything it's about everything that it's not sustainable yes and for, uh, people ask about us oh you like a fitness crew I'm like no absolutely not uh our our activities are Sure, they're active, but we then we people we I go remember. eat and drink. <laughs> <laughs> but, then, but then we go eat and drink. There's balance, yes, right? Yes, yes, there's balance. So it's not not about like go be active, eat a 
kale and and just drink water. If no. it was kale, I, I wouldn't come. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about balance because that's that's sustainable. That's something you can do for long term. Granted, the thing of the thing of being active in a social environment is fun and and is being act, being social in in a place that's not a bar or restaurant, right? Yeah, exactly. But no, we, that's amazing actually yeah. because you get like you do an activity which mm. is amazing, like. A, especially here in the city, which is like really hard to do that things. Yeah. And then like you come together with people like your friends and you meet like other people and yeah. you get these stories and everything, which is amazing. It's mm -hmm. like an experience. Yeah. And like I really enjoy like coming like with you. Well, uh, hopefully you will see you again soon Sardinia. when you have time. <laughs> um, after Germany, where did you go? After Germany, I went to Milan. Mm -hmm. um, I went there like for uh, almost a year. And that's the first time I got sick. Because like I got sick like many times in the years. And like when from you mean work. sick, uh, stress um, induced sickness. I, yeah, I yeah. I got so, like I was starting to work like with huge clients like Roberto Cavalli and Dolce Cabana and stuff. Oh, wow. And it was like really exploding, and I was like so grateful. But at the same time, I was like, do I look perfect like for them? Am I gonna lose the job? Am I gonna yeah. lose the client? And the money were like so good. Yeah. Like for me, like from Greece, like from a small town, that was like crazy. Like living yeah. that life. And I remember, like, I was, like, at the gym, like, even at the weekends, I was there, like, I was doing sauna and steam room and yeah. everything, like, to look perfect. And I got, like, so stressed that one day I woke up and I had, like, acne all over my face. I had, like, huge people, pimples, like, in my face and everything. And I was, like, starting having, like, panic attacks and stuff. Yeah. And I called my agency and I was, like, this happened, like, to me and I have, like, to go. I want to go to Greece. Mm -hmm. Because when I get sick, I'm running back to my family, of course. Mm -hmm. And they said no. And that, like, it's the first time. But I love my just there, though. I know. You I what? haven't seen. I still love them. Like, yeah. they were nice, but, like, they were professional. So they were, they were like, mm -hmm. you cannot leave because, like, these people, like, book you. So right. you have to stay. And I was like, you know, if I, have, if I have to choose, like, between, like, my job and my health, I'm going to choose my health. Of course. So. I'm going to go. Either you send a driver like to take me to the airport, either I'm going by myself. And they were like, you you cannot leave. They were like, if you leave, you're going to lose like everything, the agency and everything. So I called Elena, my manager. Yeah. And I was like, this happened like to me and I don't want to do like this job like now. I need like a month or anything and I have to go to a doctor to see what's going on because if I want to keep this job, I have like to get back my face. Right, exactly. I need my face for this yeah. job, you know. <laughs> so... I called her and five minutes later they called me and they, they sent like the, the driver, like she took care of me. She took it like taking care of it. And the driver like drew me like to my, to the, air to the airport and I left. And after that like the agency like left me and they put me like in a boycott. So they were like the biggest agency like there in Milan. And I didn't work for a year because no agency accepted me after that because really? they said I'm not a professional. So. I was on the blacklist. Because, and it's funny now, because mental health, you know, talking about mental health and all that, I'm yeah. sure they're advocating that right now for, for people and for other campaigns, but at yes. the end of the day, they don't, they don't care. No, but no, no, nobody job no. cares, like, actually about your mental right. health. If you have something, you just leave and they find someone else, like, in your place. Right, but to go out of their way to boycott you, that's even an extra step. That's worse. Yeah, but that's that's what happens. Like, it's not like a crazy story. Right. Like, no, if you I leave understand. the job and you're not a professional, like to them, they just like put you in a blacklist, and mm. nobody's gonna accept you in the highest level, yeah. like with them, like in the same agencies they work with. And don't you find it crazy that you were at the top as far as the brands are working with, yeah. and you had that? You know, you would assume if you're the top, it's less stress, or you're the top, you're there. But you had more stress, the most stress then, which is interesting. No, then I didn't. I didn't. I never realized that I was like in a top agency. That just people told me there that it is a top agency. Right. And I saw them how they work. Like, I didn't know anything about agencies, mm -hmm. like, of course. But, like, I saw, like, how they work and, like, how hard they were working for me and everything and all the girls and getting, like, all the good jobs. Yeah. So I was like, they must be very good. Like, I'm right. in a very good agency, you know? And they were really nice. They just did their job. So a year later, I, my manager, Elena, she managed to get me, like, in Fort Paris. Eventually, the blacklist was off, the yeah. <laughs> and I went to Paris. But before, what did you do for that year? For that year, I was working in Greece. Doing what? 
modeling. Oh, you were, okay, so yeah, you were yeah. I was okay. doing, yeah, I was yeah. doing the same thing. The first three months, no. I, to get like off acne and stuff, I, I didn't took medicines, but I did like a therapy with creams and stuff, and I didn't go out like in the morning. Only when the sun was down, so I didn't got like any scars on my yeah. face. That's why you can see, because I had like three times acne, one there, one in Paris, and one in New York, of course. Of course. <laughs> the stress with like periods, yeah. and I went like to Fort Paris, and the first day I, I went there, I met in the elevator with the CEO like from here. Yeah. I was like really lucky, and he asked me. I didn't know who he is. Of course, he's a CEO. Of course, would I know him? He was like the, C- <laughs> the CEO of Ford Models, New York. New York, yes. Was in Paris and he was saw in Paris the same day. Yeah. The same day, like yeah. I was like with my um, luggage, like from the airport. Like he was like the same thing. Like we went like in the elevator. And he was like, "Are you going in or out?" Like I was saying to say hi or goodbye to the agency, and I was like, "It's my first day. I'm just checking in." He was like, "Nice." So like we go upstairs. We you sign like for New York, like Ford, and tomorrow like we fly to New York. And I was like. Am I? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, are you for real? Who's that guy? You know? So we went upstairs. He was a CEO yeah. of New York, like Ford, and we made the contract and everything. But I didn't go because I had like to stay for a month for sure with Paris yeah. because that's why I went there. It, right. it wasn't like honest for me like to leave, and they just opened the door for me again, like you know, of course, to work. So I was there. I didn't like Paris. Um, I love it like for vacations or everything, but like it's so hectic. There are like so many people, so many tourists. Like to get to a casting in the subway, like passing through the Louvre, yeah. like you have like to survive to get like the casting or, or like at work. And I feel it was like a bit dangerous, like to be alone. So I was kind of scared. What, what, why do you feel so dangerous in Paris? Like most of the jobs, they were like they are like early in the morning, like seven a.m. So mm. you have like to take the subway, like six a.m. Oh, on your own, yeah. Yeah, because like we didn't make so much money. Right. I didn't have so much money, so I have to take the subway. I didn't take like a taxi. I was saving money. Yeah. So like there were guys there, like they were following me all the time. I was like really scared. Yeah. So I was like, maybe that's not for me. Like I'm too scared to do that. And everybody was so in love everywhere. <laughs> and I wasn't. <laughs> I was like, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't want to stay here. <laughs> you know, and I had to, you know, a heartbreak from a guy mm-hmm. that time. So it was worse. Oh, it was worse. It was amplified. It yeah. was worse, you know. So it was that, like, you know, I'm going to Greece. I didn't go to New York. You didn't go to New York? No, I went like to Greece. Why did you go back to Greece instead of New York? Because New York was like in a different, like, uh, it wasn't like Europe. It's a different continent. Mm-hmm. So I had like, I was going to be like really far, far away from my family. And I am really close with my family. Like we talk every morning. We have like this ritual, like we FaceTime like each other and we talk about everything. So I was like, that's too far, you know, like I, I can like hop like in a plane and go like see them for, the, for yeah. a weekend. So I went there and I was talking for it, for it like with them. Like, maybe I will go to New York. And when they say, like, yeah, that's too far, you shouldn't go, I was like, no, I should go. Oh, so your parents said it's too far? Yes. So but it's the first time that they say, like, no. So it's the they first didn't say time. no. They so because they said no, you're like, no, I'm actually going to go now. Yeah, but it wasn't about that. Like, when, like, they got, like, stressed about it, I was like, maybe I could go, like, further than that. Like, I saw that my parents has, have a limit. And, like, you know, they were like, okay, maybe we can, like... Like my mom, she never like went outside like Greece. Mm, yeah, so see, my yeah. sister like she went like in Istanbul or like closer. I was like maybe I can go like further than this. This like maybe yeah. I can try. And she's like you say no, it's gonna be a challenge. So maybe I should try like a challenge right. and see where it goes. So they didn't know, but they convinced me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so I left like. What year is this? What? What year? What year? Uh, 2012? 2012, okay, yeah. yeah. So I came like February 2012, yeah. February is a terrible month in New York. It is, yeah, it was <laughs> so cold. Yeah. I was wearing thermal clothes. You were thermal? Yes. <laughs> when On I came the way here, here I, it was freezing outside. Oh, it was so cold, yeah. And she's like, uh, yeah, my friend told me I should wear thermals. I said, hey, don't worry about it. I regret it. I regret <laughs> it's freezing. Like, oh my God, it's freezing outside. Yeah. So, you know, they, 
it's easier to come because they sponsor you like from work to come here. So yeah. I had like all the papers and everything and they get you like for castings and stuff. So it wasn't that hard. You get like the model apartment, yeah. you know, you pay for it and everything. But, you know, you have to have some savings to come to New York. And I came here. And everything changed. Like, first of all, New York City is the easiest city in the world. It has just numbers. Everything is like that. Oh, the, the streets. Yeah. The streets, like, everything was so easy. The subway is everywhere. Like, That's it was like funny. a heaven for when, models. When tourists ask me, like, hey, where, where's 45th Street? I said, you're on 43rd Street, count. <laughs> like yes, it's, it's like, look up or down. Yeah, like, exactly. you're going to find it. It was so easy. Everything was like 24-7. Yeah. Like, that was like heaven. Yeah. You well, can find funny, anything, I don't, anytime. I don't think about that until I leave New York and I'm hungry after like, you know, maybe a night out. Nope. And the only option is like McDonald's, pizza or kebab. I'm like, here yeah. you can have a full real meal you have at everything. four in the morning. Yeah. Like the first time I went back like to Greece after New York, I went to eat some bread and it was Sunday in my hometown. We don't make bread on Sunday. Like, really? yeah, they're closed. So I was like to my mom, okay, can we, I'm going to buy some bread and everything. It's like, where? <laughs> I was like, at the bakery. And she was like, how? I was like, I'm going to go in there and buy with money and yeah. take the bread. And it was like, it's Sunday. I was like, so? She was like, girl, it's not New York here. Yeah. We don't have bread on mm -hmm. Sundays. <laughs> I was like, okay. I don't know if I, that's the thing. I don't know if I can, I'm sure I could obviously survive. Yeah, I don't know if I don't want to be somewhere yeah. where I couldn't get anything I wanted at any time. You know, I'm spoiled by living here. We get spoiled here. Yeah. 100%. We get like really spoiled. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But like, I loved it here. I so loved it. I had so a great time. The agency, like, were, the bookers were so nice with me. I love him. I'm still with them here. Okay. They were calling me. I don't know why they cared so much. I think because of my agent, like in Greece. Maybe they talked to them, like, they talk, she told them that she's nice, just take care of her, you know. Right, right. They were calling me, I remember, like the first days, and they were you're, like... You're eight, your manager in Greece sounds like your fairy godmother. She is. Yeah. She loves me very much, yeah, yeah. and I love her too. I mean, she's, she's definitely someone I'd want as my, uh, my manager if I were in Greece, yeah, for sure. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. Yeah. I love her. So they were calling me, like, yeah. do you have, like, meetings? Are you called? Do you need anything? And I was like, does agencies, like, do that? Like, do yeah. they call you, ask you if you're called? Or if you're like, they, they were so nice. <laughs> So yeah, I had a good time in the beginning. I was starting like beginning, working. So yeah. that was the first two years or so. The f the first uh, no, the first four years they were really good. Yeah. Like I was like really growing, growing like really fast. I got like my own apartment. Like I was making friends. And then like I was getting older, and I was like in New York, where like you can make it or not. Like yeah. there's nothing in between. Yeah. Like if you don't like have family here. You're done. Mm -hmm. So I start like getting anxiety because of that. Like yeah. nothing happened. It was just in my mind. No, I I totally understand that. And yeah. this it, just in your mind is actually a bad statement because in your mind can control everything. 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 It can make something feel like something very minor it can consume you. I know. Like I was doing great, yeah. and and yet like I had like this talk, these thoughts, and everything like changed. Like even like in my reality, I was like getting anxious. I got like acne again. Mm -hmm. I couldn't work, and then like I had an accident, and then I had another. Like. And everything like went bad. Yeah. Like everything was like falling apart. And I met you. I met you in was it, uh, six years ago. Six, we are twenty-two. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah. Two thousand sixteen. Yeah. So this is when you started. When I started, you were already feeling this way. Yes. You're already feeling that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I met you through a very good friend of ours, John. John Legas. Yeah. Uh, John. Uh, I met John. I think I met John in twenty two thousand seven, two thousand eight, something like that. Uh, at a gym, uh, it was with friends of my friend Brent, and we played basketball together. And yeah. we, we uh, he was my trainer. That's how he was your trainer. We played yeah. basketball together, and then and then we reconnected. Um, I forgot how. I think he just messaged me off to a party, and we started hanging out a lot. Um, and then he introduced me to you, and and I I think I, I I hung out with him more from the second time I started hanging out with him. Um, uh, and, and and unfortunately, and I want to kind of dedicate this show to John. John passed away yes, uh, a year from and cancer ago. a year and a half ago. Yeah. He battled for 15 months, um, and uh, that was uh, that was tough. That was like one of the first friends of mine that I saw. Uh, like he was supposed to be my 40th birthday party, and he texted me. He's like, I think I have the flu, 
And uh, and I don't want to just talk about him being sick because there's a lot of fun things about about John. But Most of them were fun. Mo- I mean everything. I mean the, le- yeah. the way he lived life. But it's the first person I saw from diagnosis till till the end. Uh, uh, as for friends of mine who passed away, that was tough. But uh, I'm left with great memories. He and I went to we were happened to be in Amsterdam at the same time, and like the whole yeah, time, yeah, and yeah. I told you we were like. We stop everywhere and get like pastries and beer, like combine them, like, <laughs> get fat and drunk, uh, have many nights out, uh, and again basketball we played on ta- uh, a few leagues together. But he also lived his life in a great way. And we're talking about yeah. to tie this into how you're feeling is you know the the stress of trying to make it, try to trust of like the stress you're putting on yourself. Right, it's no external. It's all you're putting on yourself, it's and it's all understandable. Yourself, yeah, he didn't live with that. John didn't live with that. John lived like very light and i remember a friend of mine brent who who i met him through it's gonna sound like he was hating but he was just confused like how's this guy always being social always f- having fun always out and doing so well for himself right like he was a great trainer he did made a lot he of money he was a great trainer yeah and he was like and brent was like slaving away on administrative stuff creating marketing plans and all that and not doing as well in that in that world and brent's doing great for himself in another way now but um and his personality was just like magnetic you know, like you know, he had like this Greek thing inside him. Mm-hmm. Like he was like a part Greek. Yeah. But, like he'd never like been there, only twice like for vacations, and he didn't speak Greek in the beginning, right. which was amazing like for me because I could. Wait, teach he him. only went there twice. He told me he played basketball in Greece. He didn't. No, he came only twice. Oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe when he was coming, but yeah. like yeah. I think it was twice, yeah. yeah, or like maybe thrice, like, yeah. but like that's what I remember. Yeah. Um, well, he has like the great, great like Greek personality, yeah. where he wanted like to be friends with everybody mm-hmm. and make them like feel happy yeah. and loved. Yeah. Which was amazing. And he, and you felt that from him. Yes. Yeah. Like he, he told me like so many things, like uh, we started like as a. Um, he he was like my trainer. Mm-hmm. He was training me, so he was like very like professional with me, and he learned like he teach me how like to eat good, how like to sleep like good, like yeah. how to work out like in a good way, so I can be like healthy and consistent, and now how like can I be successful successful like in everything I do, and he was there like for me always, and then because I I was listening. And I was like a good student to him. I think he loved me, you know, and that's how we became friends. Yeah. Because it was so easy, natural for us, like to communicate. Also, yeah, I'm sure you guys talked nonstop. You must nonstop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when we were working out, like we yeah. didn't shut up. Like, I'm a, sure. yeah. And when he started, like, understand Greek and like speak Greek, well, that was amazing. And that's a funny. F- I didn't know that he didn't speak Greek fluently growing up. And no. I, you told me that. Yeah, and he had a Greek girlfriend, girlfriend like at the time. Yeah. So he was teaching, like she was teaching him like Greek words and stuff, yeah. and he can like put them together. He knew like ten words, but like ten and words can do nothing. I don't say he spoke fluently because I don't know how to speak. No, Greek. he didn't speak fluently. But, but you thought it was fluently. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke conversationally, which yeah. is more than we before you met com- him. Yeah. yeah, we could do a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's my guy, Malaka. That's that's my dude. Oh, I miss him. So, um, so, so, yeah. You're in New York, and things are just getting stressful. Um, you kind of felt this way. It must have been like what four years, five years, uh, or no? It was like three. two years, two like years, 2018. Yeah. Like yeah. for two years, I was like really struggling and stressing, and didn't know what to do. Uh, if I should leave, if should, should I stay? And then I was starting like getting sicker and sicker, and I had like to take medicines. Like one of them was like for the rest of my life. I was like taking like a medicine, like it's about like women stuff. Yeah. And they were like, you're not, you're never like gonna get past this. So you have like to take this medicine for the rest of your life and stuff. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna live with that. I don't know. Uh, then one day I woke up, I booked the ticket, and I left to Greece. That's crazy. And that's where you, you told the story. So you 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 were staying with John. Yeah, I was and, staying with John. And you uh, you just woke up and literally bought a ticket. I bought a ticket and I left, yeah. Because we were sitting like in in his doorsteps. <sighs> I'm trying not to cry. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. Take your time. Wow. I'm trying like three minutes now. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we're sitting like in his like doorsteps and that's bad for your health, like people, but we were having a cigarette because we were like I was really stressful. And he was like, you can deal with it. You, he was like, you're so strong. And I've seen you like thriving like here. Like yeah. it's only your mind. You have like to get 
to get past like through this. So you need to, f you, you are the person that knows what, where is the exit from this. So I can tell that you are like going to your lowest, but you're not in the end yet. All right. So if you stay here, you might hit rock bottom. But he said this. Yeah, yeah, he said that. Oh, I didn't know that. He said that, yeah. I, I remember like the rock bottom. Yeah. Like, because that was, that was the time like my heart said like, I don't want to go there. Mm. Like, I need to find the exit now. So I made like the translation in my mind and the exit was like Greece. And I was like, I should go home to my family where I'm safe and I can like have some time. I have to, I can win some time, you know, to know what to do like right. after. Yeah. So I booked the ticket like with him there and I went upstairs, packed my stuff and left. And what's amazing is um, that you left and you thought you'd come back. It was kind of what we talked about in the beginning yeah, of this podcast. Yeah, I thought I'm going to come back like three minutes later. Like yeah. I was thinking that I want to be like healthy and strong and everything. Like nothing happened like that. Only yeah. the job went like amazing. Like it, it went like really well. But like I got like sicker in Greece in the mm -hmm. beginning. Wait, why do you think you got sicker in Greece? Or you think it was just like your body just letting go of all the stress from the other places? Up in New it York? was a stress and it was like then it was about like the people know you. So, you know, I was like so stressful and then I was like really scared like because people like were touching me and talking to me in the street and I, I never knew like I oh, just came back from New York. Like if, if, if someone touched you in the street, you yeah. have to call the police. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not that easy. So it was hard for me that part that people knew me and then it was hard for me to understand like the job yeah. because it was the first time I was doing it and I was trying to do like my best. Mm -hmm. Then I had like um, a bullying experience at work. A so bullying experience? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I was like trying to have a balance with it. I had a boyfriend in Greece too. I had like a breakup. It was kind of public. So it was like, I was like, oh my God, why did I do that myself? Like mm -hmm. I was struggling. I got sicker. And then this is going to see like people from Greece like, I had a surgery then, like nobody knows that. Like the second season of the show, I was like really, really, really bad. So I had like surgeries and stuff and I was like taking medicines and mm -hmm. everything. You can, if you knew me, you can understand that I was sick. Like m my weight was changing. I was okay. like getting weight in one episode and then like, losing weight, like from oh, the wow. medicines and the stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my friends knew and my family that something was like, it's not working. Something is like really off. And first and second year, like, was like a nightmare. Mm. And I, but I was pretending to be very happy, you know, like very successful. And how, how, how did you feel? Only because I know you go to Greece to kind of plant your roots and, and heal because that's where you go. And all of a sudden yeah. you find yourself where you usually go to heal. And then you're feeling the opposite just as happened. bad. Yeah, yeah, worse. You know, my, my job, like my work was going like so good. Like everything like at my job was going like great. Yeah. So I was like, you know, you have like one problem solved. Like okay, this cares. Oh yeah, the future. Yeah. Yes, yeah. of course. Which is a big one when you have anxiety. Of That's huge. Yes. Yeah. So the cares, like it's, you don't have a curse anymore. You, right. you can work. Now we have to fix that part. Right. That you're not healthy and you're like very like stressed and everything. So we finished like the second season. Then like I was off the show. For some reasons, like I cannot talk like. But like I'm always off the show, yeah. And then the pa the pandemic like happened, yeah. And we had like a lockdown in Greece, like for fifty five days. We were like staying inside home, and were you alone? No, I, I had a boyfriend at okay. the time that yeah. year, and we had a great time at the lockdown. Like he was like the sweetest person. I'm I'm so lucky he was with me. So the the lockdown happens. Yeah. The first week I was like so scared that I got like COVID somewhere and someone like died because of me. And I was like so depressed, like, and I forgot like all of my problems. Really? Like, there's a pandemic, like people dying. Yeah. You never know what's gonna happen. Mm. So I, I stopped worried about like my job, like if I have a job or not. Your priorities, you realize yes. what your priorities were. Yeah. I didn't care like about my hair, my life, right. anything. I was just wanna be like happy healthy and stay with my boyfriend yeah and after the first lockdown i went like to the doctor to make my exams because i was late and 
I was healthy again. Really? Everything so was, everything changed. was stress induced, all mental. Everything like changed. Like I'm, I'm not taking medicines anymore. Yeah. I was like, my weight came back like yeah. to my normal. I never like got like, I never got anxiety back because yeah. I put first like myself now. And I yeah. always think that like after pandemic, you know, nothing matters. That's just your, your and health. And stress is terrible. If I remember, if ever you feel sick, never go look it up on online because it can be like you have cancer, you have AIDS, or you're just stressed out. No, <laughs> either it's so stress or we're yeah. dying. Like there's no like, yeah. there's no in between. But you know, it was like a huge, it was a huge thing like in Greece, like and in my comments, like in my social media, that like I lost weight and I look different, and like I got like all this comment that I am sick and stuff, like. I'm not sick. Yeah. I used to be though. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm healthy again and I just I'm not stressed anymore. So like what I'm is just the secret? happy. What is the secret? The secret is I think it started like from one thing like that my manager told me, like during the bagu- the pandemic, when yeah. I found out that like uh, I lost my job. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um she told me like, Do you really wanna be in a job that you're not happy or do you wanna be happy? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, from now and like forever, like I'm just gonna be happy no matter what happens. Yeah. So now you have, you have two of your own shows now in, in yep. Greece. <laughs> right? Now that you lost one show, now you have two of your own. Yeah, so like after I lost like the show and after like the pandemic, like during the pandemic, mm-hmm. like I got a call like from like many networks, like from Greece, like to work with them. Um, so I got a contract and they gave me like um, a live TV show. Mm-hmm. For someone who was just a judge, like in a show, and doesn't know how to do live TV. Wow! So you know, I was like, I'm not. I didn't die from like COVID, so yeah. let's <laughs> risk it. You never know. <laughs> I was like, that would be fun. Yeah. So I did that. It was fun. It was hard. I was working like 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. every day, like oh, wow. all day. I was trying you know, to learn as many things as fast as I can. Yeah. And I was like there, I was going like to the other like TV shows uh, and watching them. I was doing like everything I can. I was asking so many questions. Like I hope like my coworkers they don't hate me. Right. I was like asking like 50 questions every minute. Like, what is that? What is that? Right. What does it mean? How do that? How, where that goes? Everything, everything. Mm-hmm. And it was funny and it was like, it was really funny because I didn't understand what a leader, like as a leader, what I had to do, like in the show. So when like the production was like in here and was like fixing like the table or the chairs, I was just doing the same thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I should help them. You know, they're just they're gonna move but the table. They probably appreciated that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, they appreciated it, but yeah. like it was so funny. I didn't know. I was just yeah. grabbing stuff like behind, <laughs> and I was running with the chairs. I'm like, where is she going? They were like, what is she doing? Yeah. So, you know, I was this crazy person, like, who everybody just eventually, like, had fun with. Right. <laughs> because I was so naive and I didn't know what to do. But it's, it's probably better than better off like that than expecting people to do the stuff for you. Right? Yeah. No, I never expected. I th- so you I earn their respect by doing that. Right. But because of that, by yeah, default. Yeah. I love them so much. Like, yeah. I have a great time, like, with the people that I work. Because I always do that. Like, I think it's fun and it's nice to be kind, like, to people. And, yeah. like... When you're in a position like to get power, that's when you show people what oh, you absolutely. are, you know? Like if you have the power and you're in that position, just try and help yeah. as much as you can. Like if you just can give them like a bottle of water, just do that. Yeah. Like it's fine, but just be kind, you know? Because I was on the other side and I had like a really bad time. Yeah. So if you get the power, just use it in a good way. Yeah. It always comes back to you, always. Um, let me ask you, uh, before you started this path of the modeling and now the TV. Yes. What were you were studying uh, business and, and journalism. journalism? What did you yeah. want to do? I didn't know. I didn't I knew that that I didn't want to do journalism. I didn't want to do that. But mm-hmm. like this like school was like the best in Greece mm-hmm. and I learned about it like from a friend. And because I was like from Patras and my um, my business like school was there, I couldn't leave from my mm-hmm. hometown. Okay. So I was like, maybe I can go to this school that's in Athens and I can pay for it so I can live like from my hometown. And you never know, maybe I will be a journalist, maybe not. Oh, so you, you always wanted to leave and saw a bigger pass, right? I didn't want to always leave, but mm. I think that something like pushed me there. Like one morning I woke up and I just told my parents that I'm going to leave and I'm going to go there. 
It like, seems like that's heard, kind of like a lot of the decisions you've made yes. have either been your choice to pick up and leave or someone else saying, hey, yes. you're going to do this. I'm an Aquarius. That's why. Uh, is, oh, is that why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're adventurous. Okay. Like I heard like from the school, like Monday and Friday, I told my parents, like, parents that, oh, I'm going to go like to that school. I didn't even think about it. I just really? went there. Yeah. Got the job and paid. Well, for some the people school. they say some people should listen to themselves or their 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 gut feelings more often. You seem to do that entirely without thinking it I through, but it works. works for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please don't blame me if it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think just like God was so nice with me, like okay. all the time. Um, so we got some questions to ask you, some more specific because this was a great story. Okay. Um, so. What are your goals now, or goals and dreams? Oh, my goals and dreams. You know, yeah. I have a niece, you know that. Yep. So since like um, I did this path like by myself, uh, I had this like God fairy like by my side, mm -hmm. but she always let me choose my future because it doesn't want like to be involved like in the decisions in the end because then you, you can blame her, you know? So she makes the path and she has, you have to choose though which way to follow. Right. So I made this path for me and I did my choice and everything and everything really worked out like amazing for me right. and I'm like really grateful and I'm very lucky because I did work a lot but I was lucky too. Yeah. Like I have to admit that like I had a great luck. Even yeah. like in my bad days I was lucky. Right. So most of the people don't. So I want like to set the record straight like especially like for my niece who is like 8 years old and she's growing up now and we are like in in a society that like social media runs everything and you can like have anything like for a post like on Instagram, yeah. which I do and I get paid for it. Right. You know, I do that, but it's not that easy. You know, it's not only about that. You have to be kind. You yeah. have to listen. You have like you have to study, even if it's not working. It's something that's going to be like really helpful for you in the future. You, it's going to open your mind. You have to travel mm -hmm. and you have like to socialize with people, like be careful, but like you can be a little open and because you're going to learn so many things like from other people, other cultures, other countries, you have like to travel yeah. and see the world and everything. And is this, the, inform is this the, uh, the advice you're giving your niece? Yes, like and to everybody, like don't wait for people like to make things for you, like Absolutely. make it by your own, like find yeah. a job, like my first job, I was like, bringing like coffees by foot like to you know to stores and everything and it paid me really well i was i was making fifty thousand steps a day fine it's okay i was working out too <laughs> i was getting money but i was i was doing that by myself for myself yeah and i was making my money and i was like free to do whatever i wanted and mm -hmm. i didn't have like to expect from anyone not even from my family so you have to work for yourself you have to plan your future you can trust that you can make it because you can make it. It's all like in your mind. Right. If you don't, you Confidence have like. Confidence you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And you have to believe that you can do it. Like yeah. I did like this. Did few you believe things. that you can do all this early yes, on? You yes. Knew that you knew in, in your heart, you knew you could do all this. Yes. I knew that really? I can do it. Yeah. Because I grew up like in this environment, like my mom was like so caring and she was like pampering like me and my sister most most of the time me like all the time but my dad who loved him very much he was like this guy who always like told us like if i asked like for something like to get fixed he was like you can do it by yourself yeah. he never did anything like for us so like in that, that way thing? yes okay because i asked him like five years ago because i got curious i'm older now and we talk like we're friends and yeah. i was like why didn't you like pummer me like more yeah. When I was a kid, like I needed that. Yeah. And he was like, No, you didn't. Like your mom did that all the time. You needed to be strong and you needed to be confident mm -hmm. and you need to do things by yourself. See where you are. And you think it was good that you had one parent who pampered you? Yes, one parent who I did. think it was great. Like okay. because we are two girls in my family, maybe my sister, we didn't have a boy. My mom took care of us like as girls and my father as boys. Okay. So I always, I, I was always like a boy. They were calling me like by, by boy's name yeah. at my apart, at, at, at my home. Yeah. And I was feeling like strong. Like yeah. if my dad needed something like help, he was asking me. He didn't ask like my cousin who was a boy. Right. He was like, no, she can do it. Right. He never said she's a girl. Right. Never. Right. So I had like 
this mental, this environment, like growing up, that I'm strong enough and I can do it, like mm-hmm. whatever it is, because my dad thinks I can. Well, he knew you could. Yeah, he knew. And he put it in you to instill you to believe all that you time, could do as yes, well. All the time. So uh, that goes to my next question. What, kind, what motivates you to keep on pursuing your goals? What's your motivation now? My motivation, you know, um, what I'm thinking now, because I'm here in New York and I'm like traveling and visiting my friends. You're moving back to New York. That's great. No. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, though. Um, I have like these shows that like coming up and I want to do, uh, I want to help like my other friends like from, from the group. Yeah. Like we're like a group, like my agent has like a, like an agency, she's a manager and mm-hmm. I want to support like all the people we have there like to make like even better mm-hmm. and like help them in any way I can. And I want to learn like um, other like fields like in my work, like production and stuff, which I love. That. Yeah. I love production. I would mm-hmm. love to do that. Uh, it might take like five, ten years to actually like do it like in a good way. But, you know, I can be an assistant. I can clean. I can bring you coffee. Like <laughs> just hire me. I'm in. Um, I think I think you're on the right path, too, though. You've already studied the other shows. Yes. It seems like you uh, you put the work in. I yeah. did that in every show, actually. Yeah. yeah, I was studying like the show from the beginning. I yeah. got like the one that we it's it's now in the air. It's a format, so I got like everything, and I was writing down like every second of it, so I mm. knew like how to do it like perfectly. Yeah, which was not my job, yeah. but I love to do it. But yeah. it's important to know every aspect. I love to, to do it. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to know every detail on how to do it, but understanding how it works is important. Yeah, no, I went. I I go like really deep into it. <coughs> like I I piss like people off. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the annoying one. I'm the annoying one. Okay. Yeah, because I want to learn everything. Yeah. I don't get involved if they don't ask me for my help or anything. Right. I will never go like to the director and tell him what to do. But I like if he like let me like be there, sit with next to him yeah. if it's not like my part to be on camera yeah, yeah, yeah. to watch how like it's happening. Like it's so like and that's great to have it's the amazing curiosity about the urge to micromanage. Yeah, I, I love like to great. learn about anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in your eyes, what does success mean to you? Like you've achieved or what do oh, you see? Success yeah. is yeah. about like health like you, when you feel like happy and healthy with yourself and your choices yeah i don't think it's about like money or fame or, st- or things like that because you know we come like we come naked and we go naked yeah. all of us we're right. gonna go to the same place so it doesn't matter like this part it helps yeah i'm not gonna lie it helps like you can have money you can have an easy yeah. life or you're famous famous it gets you like to places and stuff but are they always happy are Good they happy question. with the choices? Are you happy well, when you go back can't make home? You happy. Money can't yes. buy happiness. No, it can't. Like now, I feel like I'm so grateful that I have like a few friends. I have my family. I have my home. After work, like I go there. I go like the trees and the mountains, and I'm just happy. Yeah. That's all I want. Like to be healthy. So you're to have feeling a place the success of food. now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just feeling like just love. You know, that's what I want. Health and love. That's my okay. success story. That's a great success, right? There. That's a great measure of success. Yeah. Um, what is a dream that you've yet to achieve since you're feeling your success now? What? Is what? A dream that you haven't achieved yet. Haven't achieved yet. Well, I'm not a Hollywood star. Do you want to be a Hollywood star? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but what is a real what is, what is a real dream that you want to achieve? Because well, it is a possibility. You could be a, become a Hollywood star if you wanted to. You're already yeah, uh, that's true. Maybe. a star in your own country, so... Oh, I don't want to be an actor, actress. Okay. It's so hard. I don't know how people do it. So like, what, do you, what, do, what do you... A dream of me would be like people like to watch it po- this podcast, like to know me, but they don't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, to get to know the real you is your dream? That's the real me. Like yeah. now they've seen already everything. Yeah, I guess now they have. <laughs> Didn't hide anything. I'm sorry if you don't get any more jobs in Greece. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to lose my contract. <laughs> no, my dream, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm such in a good place mm-hmm. right now. Like, I'm happy. So you say you're living the dream. I'm living my dream Lucky now. Lucky you. <laughs> I think because I'm traveling and see all of you again, and yeah. I feel like free again that I can do that. Mm-hmm. Because that part is always like triggering to me, even when I was getting like my green card and I couldn't travel. Yeah. You know, you remember like I was like really stressing out mm-hmm. because I didn't feel like free. Yeah. The thing is that I'm free now and can, I can do whatever I want, like, that's amazing. So freedom then? Yes. Okay. Um, what is your favorite part of The Outsiders? My favorite part? Yeah. You. 
Jeremy, Me? you're my uh, favorite part, of course. I love you. I'm my friend. I'll give you your money later. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> How much did we say? I don't need his head get any bigger because I'm going to need to get bigger lenses to get his head in, in the shape. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, all right. One more question before we get into our rapid fire question. What is your most embarrassing moment? A most embarrassing moment? I've had yeah. so many. Let's find one. Um... Well, an embarrassing moment, which like it felt like that for a second though, and then I enjoyed like so much. Mm -hmm. uh, the first like year I did like the show like in Greece, the yeah. next top model thing. I was like, <laughs> because I was want to make like the girls to relate with me and feel like, open and safe like to talk to me. Yeah. They were saying like, oh, I play, I play, like, I play soccer and stuff. And I was like, oh, I was playing soccer like a kid. So you know, I was yeah. trying to find a connection. Yeah, of course. And whatever they said, I was trying to find something similar I did, and I was telling that. Yeah. So they made a compilation like on the show, of course. Oh my <laughs> and I was like, oh, I did that, I did that, I did the other thing, and there was like all this thing that I was doing, all the years of my life. And then that became a meme, like a huge meme, like everywhere. Oh, I did everything, basically. Everything, yeah. yeah. In the beginning, like for a few seconds, I felt like embarrassed. And then yeah. it, was, it was so funny yeah. that I did my own memes and I was sending them to my friends. <laughs> we got to send some of those to me. We'll put I them know. in a, uh, in a but reel. But it was like, that's my favorite part now, actually. Really? Yeah, that's my favorite part. I still make like memes like that. Okay. Yeah. Well, trans make some in English so I can yeah. understand those. And they called me like Chuck Norris, like in Greece. Oh, because no one, yeah, because uh, no yeah. one's better than Chuck Norris. Of yes. <laughs> um, that's funny. I wouldn't say that's embarrassing, but well, I guess if, if, well, if for like, me it was. <laughs> millions of people are laughing at me, then I guess I'd be embarrassed. Yeah. yeah. But then it was so funny. Yeah. I couldn't but laugh, you know, so by that's myself. That's a good attitude to have. That's the only way you get over it, I guess, right? Or yeah. It no, you. I loved it because. They're so smart and they pick up things like so fast and yeah. they were doing like these memes and I was like, who are these people that are so funny, you know? Yeah. I, I need to meet them. They might be commenting on our YouTube video once, uh, once this airs. <laughs> uh, hopefully it's all positive stuff, no haters. <laughs> um, is there anything I haven't asked you that you want to share about yourself? Because I know you're always on a show and you can share obviously on your social media, but no. is there anything you want to share? This, I think like, no, I've said like so many things yeah. and I think that's the part that I never like told to anyone. Like nobody knew that I was sick. Nobody right. knew that I was struggling. Like everybody, I didn't give like... I did give the impression like to Greece that everything was fine because I never said the opposite. Mm -hmm. You right. know, so they knew that I'm a model that's coming from New York. So I should be successful all the time. I should be rich. I should right. have that. I shouldn't be sick. You sick, you know, and yeah. everything. I never like s denied that. I never said the opposite. So right. now they know which what was like the truth like for me and right. how like I experienced everything like in the first like years. In but I think it's important for people to see that because people always see what's sh what's what others want to show them, right? So you don't necessarily want to show your bad no. moments. You want to show your successes. But then when you have bad moments on your own and you don't see other people's failures, You know, harder. I was like so fragile like in, at that time because you knew I had like a part time. So yeah. it was like so hard for me, for me to be in the public eye and like have been sick in the same time and like share it with people. Yeah. And I'm not good like with sickness and, you know, right. talking about that because, you know, it makes me cry, yeah. everything about it. So... It's not easy for me to share. And it was better for me for people not to know and not to look at me with pity, you know? And well, of like, course, but sharing after you, you, you felt it, I think at some point yeah. sharing it would help others. Well, I shared it now because yeah. you knew, so yes, <laughs> it was easy course. to hide it. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful, I'm, I'm thankful <laughs> it was, for sharing it. I couldn't I'm hide sure, that. I'm sure yeah. other people watching will be thankful you share that too because if they're yeah. feeling that way and they, they hear it from you, yeah. it gives them, maybe gives them hope. You know? But it, I think it helped me because I was trying to like be this like strong person, like this strong woman who comes here. She's young and she's, yeah. you know, fearless and she do that and she do the other. So it may eventually it put me like in a character that I am that person, which I was, but I was sick. Right. Um, and it did help me a lot mm. to do that. Even like for my niece, like I could I could see my niece like before the show because she knew that I was sick. She could see me like at home. Uh, she was like, oh, you're so better now, you yeah. know, because I was living in Athens. She didn't see me like at home anymore. She mm -hmm. was like watching TV and she was like, oh, you look amazing and everything. Yeah. So you're good now. And I was like, yes, babe, I'm good. Like, yeah. it's going to be fine. That's yeah. good. There you go. Yeah. Right, thank you for sharing that. 
Oh, thank you. Now we're on to the last part of the interview. It's five, okay. five rapid fire questions, okay? Okay. So basically, I'm going to ask you a question. Whatever comes to your mind first, you answer. Okay. All right? Yes. What is your favorite city other than New York City? Oh, Athens. Athens. Okay. Yeah. Why Athens? Because it's my work. Yeah. You know, I love my job so much. Because it's not your hometown. No, it's not yeah. my hometown. You know, it. I said Athens because that's what I thought first. Yeah. And second, I thought like Mykonos. It's not about like the parties. It, yeah. My sister lives there with my yeah. niece. So, yeah. Okay. Like for me, it's Athens because of work and I love my job. But like about family, I'm going to go there f- first to my niece. Right. Yeah. I'm going to go so there first. So where family is, where yes. wherever the people are. I mean, the yeah. home is wherever the people are. Yes. I right? understand. Uh, if you could do any other profession, anything, you, mm. you, what would you do? Maybe working like with kids. Yeah. I uh, do love kids. Like it's my favorite time. Like when I'm with my niece, like we're coloring and we talk about stuff and everything and we dance and we do these kind of things. It's not like only, it's not only about like teaching, like go there and like grammar and stuff like that, right. which I can do. I, I can speak and write <laughs> for like a, a really small child though, right. a young kid. <laughs> yeah, I can do that for my niece, but I think it's about the connection. Like kids need con- someone like to connect and yeah. have fun with and if you let them like be free and enjoy the moment with them, not mm-hmm. be like on your phone or like, you know, like yeah. that, like, that can be amazing. So potentially I would do a young children's school teacher of sorts? Yeah, lo- okay. I love, I love kids. I lo- <laughs> What's your biggest fear? My biggest fear? Oh, um, I hate that fear, but it's true and it can happen. And I said that like in an interview, like in Greece, so and people weren't happy about it because they realized that like that's a really, really like bad fear. So I'm so sorry. I'm gonna put that in your mind. But when I sleep at night, yeah. since I was a kid, I have to cover my ears. Cover your ears? Yes, like with fabric and something. Not with my Do you hair. You still cover your f- ears when you sleep? Yeah, since I was five, and I watched like a documentary that like spiders and stuff like that can uh, go in your ears and I have to lay cover their my ears eggs. Now. And they can, you can have eggs in your ears. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm like if I have to be now. honest, yeah, that's my that's my biggest fear. That like some bug would go like in my ear and like have eggs, and then I have to take them out, and I'm gonna be in great pain. Well, thank you for sharing. That. Or that's I'm gonna disgusting. have a brain damage, you know. <laughs> 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 and I'm keep sharing. I'm making like worse. Oh my God. <laughs> Like, as if I didn't have enough to stress myself out about, right? Well, don't <laughs> ask that question, though. <laughs> um, if you could have a TV show about anything, 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 and it's your own show, what yes. would you make a show about? Spiders in ears? Yes. <laughs> you know, I do love Next Top Model. That yeah. was, like, my favorite, like, show. Mm-hmm. Because you can, like... That's it. It's an earthquake? No. Just mine. Oh, okay. you, I think there's maybe okay. my arms shaking the mic. Okay. So. <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's <laughs> happening. No, in New York. <laughs> no, it's in Greece though. That's why I thought oh, about it. Oh, don't worry. No. So, like, um, I love that, like, this show because you can, like, actually, like, pass your wisdom, like, to someone like you. I wish I had, like, someone with me when I was there. Like, I had my manager, but, mm-hmm. like, she wasn't a model. She didn't have the experience of the model. Like, if, like, a girl like from the industry like explain to me like in like A B C D E you know how mm-hmm. things work and how you can make it or what mistakes can you avoid the one that the ones that they know you know because yeah. it's different for everyone like the experience um, I would be like I would be better so I love the show because I, I could share like my struggles and my happy times right. like with the girls and like help them and make them like feel better um, and do better. Okay. So essentially you've already worked on your favorite show. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I had my dream job. That's nice. true. Yeah. I love the show. Nice. You're lucky. I am lucky. <laughs> yes. Oh, my last since, question. Since I was born. What's that? <laughs> since I was born, like I, I, I'm a lucky person. Like yeah. I have to admit that. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, you also make your own yeah. luck, right? It's not entirely. Luck. I do. Yeah, I do work. Um, the last question is, what's yes. your favorite food? Mm. <laughs> what is your favorite? Well, you know food? that I, I love everything. Yeah. Like I eat everything. You know, I love like cookies. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. I know, and I love peanut butter and chocolate. Mm-hmm. So, so we have cookies. cookies. You we know what's cookies. funny? I'm I'm a cookie addict. You are. I a love cookie cookies. Addict. Actually, we had great cookies the other day, and those are your, those are your. We didn't get a chance to get them today, right? No, you, we didn't. We didn't have the time. But like, if you live in New York, which I'm sure you do, 
uh, most of you, you're the not Greek people. Your, yeah. No, I'm thinking about Greece, and I'm like, they don't. No, we have we have a very a very big community in Greece. A lot of people watch our videos. Oh, gr- we're Greece? Yes. Yeah, we're oh, very, oh, we're oh, very yeah, yeah. We will we will soon. We'll have a, gr- a big Greek <laughs> community <laughs> soon. I love this guy. <laughs> so <laughs> there is this place called me like Forget Me Not. Yeah. I'm sure and it's actually not a cookie spot. No, it's not a no. cookie spot. No, no, no. It's in Lower East Side, but like the owner, his girlfriend, girlfriend like has his recipe from her grandmother. Was like so. There's like these cookies, like they make it, make them like with cereal and peanut butter and like butterscotch, like something. Mm. I don't know what like this like thing is. Yeah. And they're so amazing. Like they it's are. The I, best I tried thing. them the other day. They're yes, amazing. you tried them. So what'd you get today? We peanut butter cookies? Peanut butter, chocolate chunk, oh, and nice. We have like the sea salt. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip. Oh, is it sea salt chocolate that. chunk? But nice. Yes. This is a problem because I love I love this place. You got it from a place called Van Cookies. Yes. In Jersey City. And um, it's funny, I went there. I used to go there all the time. It's it's actually very close to my house. And Yeah, they know walk- him there. How's that? They know Jeremy there. Yeah, they actually know. So I walked in there, and before I can even make my order, they at, they told me, oh, you want this? You want the cho- sea salt chocolate chip? I'm like, yeah, how do you know? Oh, you're one of our regulars. Oh, how many regulars do you have? Four. Just you. <laughs> Just you, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try this peanut butter one, because I've never yeah, had this Yeah, me too. One. All right. Okay. Peanut butter chocolate chunk. Oh, wait, how do you do? Yamas? <laughs> it's mm. for drinks, but... Mm. Mm. It's good. I know. All right. Oh my God. Yeah, we need a moment here. <laughs> Let it sit in the mouth. Well, on that note, because mm. I want to get to these cookies, I want to say thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, not only for no, being on the show, you. but opening up about things you haven't opened up before. I think it's going to be, hopefully, some, some people in Greece who know you will watch the show and feel better about themselves knowing what you've shared. You know, thank you, first of all, like, you know, I love you like so many years and it's easier for me like to talk to you and open like myself up to you because you've been there and you know me and mm-hmm. you know everything. So it's easy to talk about with you because we've talked about it and yeah. you know like most of this stuff and everything. So now that you were like here, I opened up myself and I feel actually really better and very like relieved because we all get like through things. Mm-hmm. And as you said, it's nice like to share and, and like, feel like other people who struggle in their own like things that feel that they're not alone like we're not alone we all struggle we all have like bad days Mm -hmm. it happens to everyone nobody's happy no fame no money nothing like makes you happy if you're not like happy with yourself it all starts there Mm -hmm. and one thing to to mention also is that although everyone is special we're not so unique that we're experiencing a pain by ourselves everyone If you're feeling a certain way, chances are other people are. You know, yeah. you, we're not that special in that way. So, uh, I think, like again, I think it's a good reason why you, you shared uh, what you shared. Uh, again, want to mention, we we'll dedicate this show to John Ligas, John. my yeah. guy. Um, and thank you again. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. I love you. Love you too. <laughs>